competence and awareness. Both of them are uh, very important in order to improve the security inside the organization. First of all, competence. ISO 27001 requires that the organization determines the necessary competence for persons whose work may affect information security. This can be done uh, through job descriptions. Then it has to ensure that those persons are in fact competent in terms of their education, their training and their experience. It has to take some actions for people to acquire the needed competence and uh, to raise their competence on information security matters and then evaluate whether those actions have been effective or not. And lastly, to retain documented information to be able to demonstrate that personnel is in fact competent. Of course, competence requirements differ from one position to the other inside an organization. But generally speaking, the people who are, are um, directly involved in the implementation and the administration of the information security management system should have knowledge about ISO 27001 standard. They should have an understanding of the security concepts, techniques, policies and procedures. They should know about risk assessment and risk treatment processes and they should be aware of the controls in Annex A of 27001 and the guidelines provided by ISO 27002 and they should understand the security requirements for the technology being used by the organization. It's great if the people involved with this system uh, has um, uh, knowledge and competence in other information security standards or documents which are not uh, issued by ISO. Actions to raise competence include, of course, recruiting of uh, competent personnel, providing access to education and training on information security related matters, encouraging self-study or mentoring. It's important to say that uh, due to the dynamics of this sector is uh, highly important for people to be able to maintain their competence because the trends are changing very fast and they have to be able to to be uh, regularly updated on the information security news. As I said, to be able to demonstrate the competence, organizations should have uh, should have uh, documented information as evidence of competence for its personnel. Awareness. Awareness uh, is key in order to raise security inside an organization. And there should be an awareness program in the company to make people aware of the information security policy, of their personal contribution to the information security management system, and which are the benefits of improved uh, security performance. And then the implications, of course, of not conforming to the uh, requirements, to the procedures with regards to information security. Awareness is uh, very important to make people treat information security as an integral part of their day-to-day -day operations and not uh, something as an add-on, something supplementary that has to be also uh, performed. Awareness can be done through training, through posting on social media of the organization, through organizing events like Information Security Day, through issuing newsletters. It's uh, the choice of any organization to find the most suitable, the most attractive, the most effective um, awareness raising uh, activities with regards to information security. And those activities have to be repeated periodically uh, and the topics may be different from uh, using the email, virus protection, legislation, uh, reporting security events, depends of course on the activity of the organization on what uh, needs to be improved but it's important to do it periodically to refresh the minds of the employees on information security matters the next requirement discusses communication 
and the organization is required to determine the need for internal and external communications which are relevant to its information security management system. And it shall determine on what to communicate, when, with whom, who is responsible for uh, communication and the process by which communication shall be effected. In general, this requirement is about the organization having adequate communication channels. Because communication is important for information security matters and this is the responsibility of the organization to ensure that communications on this topic are effective. Communications may refer to a large number of aspects, like for example, top management communicating to uh, staff on roles, responsibilities and authorities. Uh, communication with stakeholders when um, assessing information security risks and determining controls. Communication with suppliers on information security matters. Communication with um, authorities or with uh, different special interest groups on information security. Communication uh, with regards to the employees reporting security weaknesses or security events. All those communications shall be effective and it is the responsibility of the organization to ensure that this happens. Documented information. Like any other management system, the information security one has to have a documented information to support it. And the size of the documentation depends, of course, on the specifics of each company, depends on the risks, on the type of information that it has to protect, on the size of the organization, on the complexity of its activities, on its products and services, and of course, on the competence of its people. But there are a number of uh, management system documents which are required specifically by ISO 27001 and of course they have to be part of any information security management system. And they are the scope of the information security management system. We have discussed about it in one of the previous lessons. Information security policy and also lower level policies that we will discuss in the second part of the course. Documentation on the information security risk assessment and risk treatment. Information security objectives. The statement of applicability, as I said, the map of implementation of the system. Documented information on the results of the monitoring and measuring of information security performance. We will discuss in uh, one of the uh, next lessons about this requirement. And also the organization has to have documentation about internal auditing, about management review, about uh, the, um, its non-conformities and the process to treat them using corrective actions. Those are the mandatory elements. And from this point on, every company, every organization is entitled to develop as many manuals, guidelines, procedures, um, specific to information security as it uh, considers necessary for its uh, uh, information security management system. Now, when creating or when updating the information security documents, there has to be an identification of description for each document using, of course, the name of the procedure or the manual, uh, the reference number, the date, the author. Also, uh, it's very common to have a code for each document, but it's not mandatory. And it's important to take into consideration format and media. It can be on paper, on electronic support, on both of them. And also uh, great importance to the language. There are many organizations who need, need to have uh, documented information in more than one language. Before being used, uh, information security documents, I mean procedures, manuals and so on, have to be reviewed by somebody inside the organization and they have to be approved. So there have to be responsibilities nominated for who makes the review and who approves documents before their use. Now, controls 
for documented information are similar to the control requirements in other management system standard ISO 9001, ISO 14001. There are similarities between the standards. So the documents have to be of course available and in a suitable format when they are needed. The organization has to protect the documents from loss of confidentiality, improper use, loss of integrity. There has to be a system to control versions in place to make sure that the people use uh, the procedures, the documents which are uh, uh, valid at the moment and to prevent the use of obsolete documents. There have to be some access control rules to this documentation, who, is, uh, uh, who can read it, who can uh, make changes to the documentation. And also it is important for the organization to define some retention periods, meaning for how long are we going to keep uh, procedures or manuals which have been uh, withdrawn, which are obsolete. It's important here uh, because of uh, legal action that may uh, be uh, against the organization and also for many documents there are legal requirements that define exactly what is the retention period. Operational planning and control. This is a very general requirement of ISO 27001. It says that the organization has to plan, to implement and to control the processes needed to meet its security requirements and to implement uh, the actions that have been decided following the risk assessment and the risk treatment processes. Also, it says that uh, the organization has to uh, implement the uh, plans that have been decided in order to achieve its um, information security objectives. In short, this requirement says that the company has to actually do what it has planned. If uh, some uh, actions were decided following the risk assessment and they are part of the risk treatment plan, well, the organization has to actually implement those controls, of course. I will not go here into detail because the second part of the course is about implementation of controls and we will discuss there about uh, planning and control. But uh, what I have to add here is about changes. There has to be a change management process in every business because uh, every business uh, is facing changes. There may be changes to technology, changes in uh, legislation, uh, changes of uh, key personnel, changes in a supplier or subcontractors and uh, an uncontrolled change uh, represents a risk, a potential risk to information security. So the requirement here is that the organization uh, makes a review of planned changes to understand what are the consequences, if there are new or changed information security risks, and if there are, the organization has to do something to address those changes. In case of unplanned changes, of course, we do not discuss about uh, any sort of planning, but uh, a review of consequences has to be done. And if there are information security risks, new one or changed one, and there is a need to do something to address them, well, the organization has to act to mitigate those risks. In general, there has to be a risk assessment uh, on information security terms for uh, planned or unplanned changes. A few words about internal auditing. Like in the case of any management system standard, ISO 27001 requires the organization to perform internal audits of its um, information security management system at planned intervals. Why do that? Well, to see whether this system is uh, implemented and uh, it conforms to the requirements of uh, 27001 and also to the organization's own procedures and regulations for information security. So first of all, the requirement is to have an internal audit program. This is a schedule, this is a planning of internal audits for a given period of time. 
The most common approach is to use one year, but there is no such requirement, so you can have an internal audit program for several years. When developing this program, the requirement is to take into consideration the importance of the processes of the activities in terms of um, information security, the risks, of course there are uh, activities that involve more risks than others, uh, the results of past audits, uh, the information security incidents that have uh, been identified, the security performance, all in all it's uh, possible to have an increased frequency of internal auditing for uh, some activities which are key or where uh, there are some information security uh, high risks and you can uh, decrease the uh, frequency for um, activities or locations where there is a history of um, conformity from past uh, information security audits. Now, for each internal audit, the organization has to uh, identify the scope, what activities and locations are going to be audited, and the criteria, what are the documents that we will use to evaluate um, uh, conformity with. Of course, ISO 27001 is the most common, but there, are, there may be other criteria like the security regulations and policies of the organization, like uh, legislation or contract requirements. Those elements have to be included in the internal audit plan. For each internal audit, there has to be an internal audit plan. The auditors, the people who uh, perform the internal auditing, have to be knowledgeable, of course, of uh, information security terminology, principles, about the risk management and the risk treatment process, the security controls and techniques. They have to be up to date with uh, current security threat, uh, threats and um, vulnerabilities the legislation, of course, and they have to know ISO 27001 and the control requirements from Annex A. Also, they have to be uh, knowledgeable of how auditing is being performed. So they have to have uh, knowledge about management system auditing. Important, they have to be independent from the activities that are being audited. So it's... Uh, in order to ensure objectivity, you cannot have an internal auditor auditing his own department or his own activity. This is quite difficult, especially for small companies. One solution is to have um, the internal audit performed by outside auditors. The results of the audit, uh, of course, it's, uh, are included in an audit report and communicated to top management. During the internal audit, uh, you can identify uh, non-conformities and, of course, for non-conformities, there have to be uh, corrections and corrective actions. Also, during internal audit, uh, opportunities for improvement can be identified and uh, written in the uh, internal audit report. The organization is required to have documented information to demonstrate that it performs internal audits. Uh, this means to have an internal audit program and to have for each audit uh, a plan, some checklist, what, uh, what was used to evaluate conformity, an internal audit report, and if there are non-conformities, some documents to record those non-conformities. This is the minimum documents that uh, are required for each uh, internal audit. The next topic is about monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation. The organization has to evaluate its information security performance, and the effectiveness of its information security management system. It goes like this. To be able to evaluate, the organization has, first of all, to monitor and measure aspects uh, related to information security, and then using the data collected to analyze and evaluate the performance and effectiveness. And it is completely up to the organization to decide what it chooses to monitor and measure.
it has to decide what uh, what its choice is what is going to to be measured and monitored it has to decide when this measuring and monitoring is going to be done how uh, by whom and how the results are going to be uh, evaluated some examples of what can be monitored and measured are here in this slide information security in events and how many of them have been in fact information security incidents we will discuss in the second part about uh, those terms accomplishment of information security objectives reported information security vulnerabilities it is completely up to the choice of the organization to decide what it monitors and measures now as i said the information collected has to be analyzed and evaluated this is part of the continual improvement process applicable to any kind of management system so the uh, objective is to find opportunities for improvement and it has the organization has to retain documented information to be able to demonstrate that it does uh, monitor measure analyze and evaluate the information security aspects there is a standard ISO 27004 as part of this family which is uh, focused on uh, this topic it's a guideline in evaluating information security performance and effectiveness of a system so if you are interested you can find there supplementary information on uh, on this uh, topic management review is another requirement common to all management system standards top management has to review periodically uh, the information security management system to ensure that it is still suitable it is still adequate and it is still effective in fact this is a meeting a meeting with the participation of top management and other positions in the company relevant to information security where a number of uh, elements are to be discussed and the standard calls those elements input data into the management review and they are uh, the status of actions from previous management review meetings the changes in the internal uh, or external issues that are part of the organization context feedback on information security aspects uh, feedback from interested parties on uh, information security matters the uh, results of uh, risk assessment and uh, the status of uh, the actions from the risk treatment plan any opportunities for improvement of course this is not um, a definitive list the uh, topics of the management review can include any other uh, topics which are considered uh, relevant like for example financial aspects how much does it cost for us to implement inf information security controls or uh, the need to to increase the competence or the awareness of personnel any topic uh, may be added to those required specifically by the standard and following the meeting there has to be some uh, output data some results of uh, the discussions what is being generated opportunities for improvement of course are one element any need to change to to make changes to the information security management system changes to uh, responsibilities changes to procedures and regulations um, any other sort of uh, output data can be generated from the management review like uh, for example deciding a new information security objectives or uh, deciding to to perform another risk assessment it all depends of course on what is being discussed the last uh, element is the organization has to keep uh, documented information to be able to demonstrate that it performs those management reviews this can be uh, the minute of the meeting or an agenda of the meeting it's up to the to the company to decide what documented information it uh, it keeps but it has to do so